pretty sure everyone watching this video is aware of the COVID-19 pandemic. If not, you have obviously been living under a rock, but either way, it's great that you stumbled across this video. So I decided to make this video to kind of shed some light because I am an ICU travel nurse and I actually live in a hot spot area right now. Um, I live in San Francisco, California. I work at a hospital treating COVID-19 patients. So I just wanted to share my experience, some behind the scenes, kind of show you a day in the life of a nurse that is taking care of COVID patients as much as I can show you without, you know, losing my job because... I need my all of my coins at this point um but yeah so i am going to show you some behind the scenes but first like this video and subscribe below also i have some links in the description box and where you can follow me so you can stay up to date with more information out there let's get the day started well, so i am walking to the bus stop i just left my house i'm on my way to work now a lot of the questions that i got were like you know how are you getting to work are the trains canceled are there no buses is there no uber and um there are still all of those things none of those things are canceled because people still have to go to work um we're able to leave our houses if there is a medical emergency so like if you need to seek medical help go to the doctor if you need food so you can go to the grocery store or if you have to go to work and of course as a healthcare worker you have to go to work so I'm on the way to catch my bus now. Um, yep. You all can see there's almost no one on this bus. It's typically packed, but just look, it's almost empty. This is where I get off to transfer. It is still pretty empty outside. Oh, hey, there's one car. <laughs> typically, we just walk right into the front door, but now we actually have to stand in line and wait to be screened. We're asked if we're having any symptoms or if we've traveled recently before we can go upstairs and actually go to work. Typically, to start my day, I go and grab my coffee. And even though the coffee shop is in the hospital, they are still very precautious. You can't use any cash, as you can see on this sign, only cashless methods now. Don't hand them anything. Grab my coffee and I'm good to go. All right, so that's about as far as I can take you guys, you know, just trying to respect patients' privacy and also my hospital as well. And my license, I need my job. It will be a terrible time to get fired. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what it's like going into work each day but i will tell you kind of what it's like in the hospital um that particular day i actually had a rule out COVID patient normally if you came in and you had respiratory symptoms and a fever we would automatically put you in droplet precautions so it's kind of exactly the same um except for now we are putting some patients in airborne precautions because of covid so i'm going to show you the gear that we actually wear this is an isolation gown. It goes over your scrubs and ties in the back. This is a surgical mask. It protects against droplets, so it's only for rule out COVID patients who are low risk. This is an eye shield. Some people wear goggles and some use a full face shield. This is an airborne precaution mask. It's called an N95. And these are PAPRs. They're also used for our airborne high risk COVID positive patients. That's pretty much all that's different, you know, just classifying different things. A lot of things are new to us, so it's like figuring it out as we go. We've had classes on, you know, how to classify a patient, how to test a patient, how we put on our gear, how we take off our gear, because it's very, very important now that we don't take this virus home we don't spread it to anyone else because there isn't a vaccine for it currently um that's being used so a few things that i have seen online that i just i'm like okay let me give give what i actually see and i know that it's going to be different from state to state from country to country from hospital to hospital but a lot of people i've heard like the hospitals are just running over with patients and we have a huge shortage of nurses which is crazy i am seeing like i'm not seeing that at all at my hospital i don't know if my hospital is unique or what um but yeah i work in the icu a lot of the icus are less than 25 percent full mine is about like maybe half full i'm a traveler so i've been canceled um where they like will call me and say you don't have to come in today there's nowhere for us to place you and as a traveler like yes i am um signed to an icu so I typically would go into an ICU every day, but they can place me anywhere. They can float me to other units. And for them to call and say, there's nowhere in the hospital for you to go, you can stay home. That's kind of a huge deal. Um, one thing that happened as soon as, you know, we started getting more and more news and information about the virus, um, hospitals started really stepping it up and preparing for an influx 
an influx of patients just in case. So we canceled all of our elective surgeries. No one at the hospital is having a surgery unless it's emergent. And because I work in the neuro ICU, a lot of them are like um, brain and spinal surgeries. Um, anyways, and so none of those are really being performed unless it's like life-threatening and they have to perform them so a lot of our beds are just open whereas typically it's like a patient coming up all the time someone's coming from PACU someone's coming from ED um, in preparation for a surgery or after a surgery none of that is happening beds are not flipping like they used to at all um, so yeah I'm not really seeing that I've heard different things and I've seen different things online but I just I'm not really I don't want to push what I've heard I just want to tell you all what I've seen firsthand what I'm seeing no it's very <laughs> slow and empty right now um, one other thing that has changed is there is a tent outside that triages patients now when you think you have coronavirus symptoms instead of going straight into the ED you're gonna go to this triage tent and I think that has helped greatly uh, because you know there is a first step before you even make it into the hospital and instead of just admitting everybody it's like no if you don't have symptoms then you can likely just go home and quarantine yourself you know if you haven't come in contact with somebody who you are aware is positive then you can likely just go home and quarantine yourself so it's not like we're just admitting anybody it's like no if your symptoms are manageable if we feel that you don't have it um, if you test negative any of those things then you're likely just going to be sent home. Um, I don't work in the ED. I don't do ED triaging, but they have a list of requirements for you to get a test because yes, it is true. There is a test shortage. Not everyone qualifies to get a test. You have to have symptoms and have been in pos um, come in contact with someone who is positive as well. Um, so yeah, not everyone gets tested. Some people do just get sent home. Um, but the patients that I see, they have been tested just because they are likely in critical condition for them to make it to the ICU. Another thing that I have seen online is that there is a shortage in PPE, personal protective equipment. Um, everyone is posting that there are no masks or that they're having to reuse masks and things like that. I can definitely say that is true. Absolutely, that is true. Um, so we wear gowns at my hospital and then we also wear um, N95 mask for most patients if they are high risk or if they um, are COVID positive and then we also wear face shields and we have a PAPR that we can wear if they are COVID positive as well. There is one PAPR on my unit currently um, and that number goes up and down just depending on like which units needed. There are six ICUs in my hospital so we kind of just have moved everything around. There's also a top floor that we have converted completely into a COVID only um, unit where only COVID-19 positive patients go to that unit. Um, so of course they would be most stocked in the PAPRs but um, they aren't there aren't just an abundance of PAPRs laying around. Um, you wipe everything down when you come out of the room. Also like the eye shields I mean, even just the other day at work, I was like, okay, so where are the other ones? And just wiping them down and reusing them. Um, mask, thank God, I have not seen, I've not had to reuse any myself, but they are definitely being guarded. So before all of this happened, there would just be boxes and boxes of masks on the unit. Maybe not even boxes and boxes because we didn't really need that many. Um, there are not many diseases that call for us to use airborne precautions. So... Um, yeah, there may be like one or two boxes laying around and, and barely any taken out. But now it's like you have to go to management to get a box or things like that. Like you can tell like, okay, we only have this amount. So we're kind of guarding these with our lives right now. Um, so that's, that's true too. So that's pretty much the backstory. Um, but for me and my experience, taking care of these patients has been the same as taking care of any other sick patient um, you know you kind of just get used to it the longer you work in intensive care um, you know the biggest thing I think now is just like the mass hysteria around it um, but we always make sure that we protect ourselves we always make sure that we're washing our hands and that we're taking things off and putting things on correctly um, so yeah it's just it's 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 nothing new for help for healthcare workers. Like I hate to make it sound like that. Um, I think I've gotten more like anxiety and things from like looking online and things like that, opposed to just like actually being at work and taking care of my patients the way that I always do. Now I'm going to take you back in to end the day with me. 
So I just got off work. I'm going to take you all across the street so you can see the overview of the city. And if you look down, you can see there's a train, there's a car or two, but there are no people outside. And it's normally so much more congested than this, you all. However, it is still absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I finally made it home. I made a stop at the corner store. And yes, we can still stop at corner stores. They're still open um, since I sell things like food. Um, so I ran in there really quick and then walked home. Typically when I come home, I just take off my shoes at the door and then walk into the house. Um, Cause there's like a doorway before the doorway and I just leave them out there. But now no. Um, <laughs> I am taking off my scrubs at the door, so yeah. Because the back of our isolation gowns are open, I just don't want my scrubs to touch anything. So I'll grab them later, throw them in the laundry, and wash my hands. All right, guys, so I hope this video has helped you. I hope it has relieved some of your anxiety and informed you a little bit. I highly encourage you all to stay up to date with everything that the CDC and World Health Organization is putting out because everything that they are posting is factual and will continue to be updated opposed to just looking at social media and things like that um so yeah i hope you all have a good day like i said remember to like and subscribe below thank you